Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to create a really cool foam effect using 3ds Max, Typeflow and Phoenix. It's a very powerful effect, but it's quite simple. You can use a mesh for the foam volume, but today we will explore another method using Typeflow VDB. As usual, the complete project is available on my Patreon with lighting, render setup, material, etc. Or you can directly purchase it on Gumroad. Let's start now. Okay, so now we are into this max and now we'll see how to create the foam effect. As I said, you can use a mesh, a geometry to create the volume for your foam. But for this tutorial, we will see a very cool way with type flow and the VDB. Okay, let's go. I will now create a type flow setup here. Open editor and I will go in type flow VDB. So I have here a brass VDB. Put the window here, maybe on the left. I will now add an object to SDF. Pick my first cylinder here and the second. Okay. I cannot go back here in my original mesh and deactivate it. Okay. So here I only see the VDB creation with Typeflow. I will now go back here to browse VDB and decrease a bit the voxel size to have a better resolution. So maybe 0.05. I think it's good for the amount. I can see here the topology. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is to create the foam growth. So I will add uh, VDB modify. Timing to continuous and we will see what happened nothing it's because we need to have a vdb solver so vdb solver and here you can see the change perfect so we can see that we have a growth but we don't have the cool creation of the foam effect so i will add another vdb modify VDB modify, same timing to continuous. And for this one in the vector operation, I will not select set, but multiply. Okay, so. Okay, so we can start to see something really cool, but it's because here we have a noise and I don't want to use the original noise, but the maps that I would create now, so. I can open my material editor. As you can see, I have already a noise here. So I will delete this one and create another. So as I said, map general noise. Maybe low value for the size, 20. Set the noise type to fractal. Increase the level to have a lot of detail in the noise. And I will play a bit with the high and the low. Okay, you can see here the noise. So now I will go back here in Typeflow in Input Scalar and select Text Map. Okay, go back to from zero. In the text map for the object, you can select here your mesh. So pick the cylinder one and cylinder two. Go down in the menu. And for the text map, I will drag and drop my noise here. So I can select the noise and link the noise to the no map here, to the map slot. In instance, of course. Okay. And now if I go forward in the animation, you can see that I have something very different. I can maybe increase the low value to so have something very different. Play with the face if you want. Great. It's up to you to play with this value to create the look you want for your form. You can play with all the noise type, with the size, low and high value, level, phase. You have all the parameter here to create the look you want for your form. Okay, so it starts to create a very cool look, but I don't want to have form in front of my object. So I will go back here in the browse VDB, object to SDF, and I will add another object to SDF. Object to SDF, no, here, 
just after this one. And I will now create a mesh just to use this mesh as a boolean to remove one part of the VDB creation. So I have here a box already created and I will use this box to create the boolean. So I can now pick the box here. Now deactivate the box and you can see that the box in addition and it's not what we want. So I will go here in operation and select subtract. So I can now reactivate the cylinder 1 and cylinder 2 and I will now go forward in the simulation. Great. Maybe go forward again. And we can see here that we have very cool form creation. You can of course here play with the phase to change the look, maybe phase to 4. Yeah, love this one. Very natural and very cool look. Okay, so now that we have our form creation, what we want to do is to use this VDB creation and create a lot of particles inside this volume to create after the creation of the form with Phoenix FD. Okay, so the first step will be to create a time measure. So here, time flow, and create a time measure. I will go here in mode and select input geometry and pick my type flow here, type flow 1. I just have to go here and add an edit poly. And now it works. Great. And now it works. Great. I will switch to input geometry. Perfect. So you can see here the time measure and the type flow. Exact same look. Great. Okay, so now what I want to do is to use this time measure as a position object. So I will add another type of setup here. Open editor, a new type of setup. I will now add a brush. For the start, I will now select the frame I want. Maybe frame 20, like this. Very cool. So start to frame 20 and 20. And I will now increase the number of particles. Okay. I will now add a position object and pick my time measure. And here you can see a lot of particles on the mesh. I cannot deactivate the time measure, don't need it, and I only need the type flow too. Okay, so you can see here a lot of particles. You can of course change the position of your particles that will change the look of your form after. You can select by face and you will only have the particle here on the face of the volume of the type VDB or you can use here volume and you will have particle in all the volume. Okay, so it's over for type flow. Now we will switch to Phoenix. Okay, so the first step again in type flow is just to go here and enable particle interface. If you don't enable particle interface, you will not be able to use the type flow for your Phoenix simulation. So I will start by creating a Phoenix particle shader here, particle shader, and I will select my type flow setup. So add. Type flow 02 and here you can see that you cannot select type flow 02 it's because as i said you have to go here and enable particle interface so enable particle interface here go back to my particle shader and now it works so we have here in the particle shader a lot of things you can use so i will start to launching a render to see how it looks actually so here i have my window for the render and I will start now. Okay. So as you can see here, we start to see the creation of the particle, but it's not perfect for the moment. So we will do some adjustment. Okay. So as you can see, the result is not very cool for the moment. It's because we are in point mode and we will now switch to cellular. I can now relaunch the simulation. And we see that we already have a different result start to be very cool like this. Yes, we can see here a lot of cellular of bubble of foam. You can, if you want to add more realism in the foam, add an environment here. So you can use an HDRI here in environment. And I will add maps, V-Ray, V-Ray bitmap and select an HDRI. So 
So here I will use this one maybe. You can see nothing changed because I have to drag and drop the map here. So the map in the environment here. And we will see the result. Deactivate the noise roll. Don't need it for the moment. And as you can see here, it totally changed the look of your foam. Now, very cool thing that you can do is to play with different size for the foam. So I will go back here in the particle shader. Size variation, I will maybe change to five. And now I can play with the distribution. You can see here that I have a lot of big particles. And if I increase to maybe 5,000, you can see I only have one here, maybe other here, not too much. So maybe 2,000. And you can see here that we have more bubble. It's very cool. A last thing that you can do to add again more realism in the final look of your simulation is to create color inside the bubble, like the thin film effect from Vera 6, but you cannot have material here in the reflection coloring. You can only use map, so we will fake it now. I will go back here to the material, create a map, maybe a gradient ramp, and play here with the color. I can maybe add violet here, something like a green, blue, and maybe orange. Okay, I can now select this map and drag and drop this map in the reflection coloring here. Of course, activate the reflection and we will see how it looks here. You can see that you have big color here. It's maybe too much. So I will just go here and decrease a bit the saturation. And you can see here that we have a very cool foam effect. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. As I said, you can find the complete project file on Patreon or Gumroad. You can also follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you like. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. See you very soon for a new tutorial, guys. Bye.